Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks. And in today's video, we are going to have some interesting artillery escapades to be able to talk about. So this game is on my free-to-play account, so immediately let me answer what will be one of the most frequently asked questions down in the comment section below. You know, got to nip it, at the, nip it in the bud right at the start of the video, right? How did you get the Borask on a free-to-play account? The Borask is a premium tank. The Borask costs money, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I managed to get this vehicle completely for free by participating in a mission marathon. And now I'm using this tank to be able to complete the mission marathon, which I'm going to be completing tonight! I'm going to do it after my Yak Panzeri 100 Tech Tree Showcase uh, to be able to unlock the new Object 274A. How do I manage to remember all of these tank names? There's like 600 different types. I guess considering that I played Pokemon a lot um, as a kid and also as an adult, uh, I, I guess that kind of makes it easier. A little bit easier to remember numbers, I feel, than to remember weird names. Like, you know, you've got to know your Snorlax from your Rapidash. Anyway, sorry, getting distracted there. This is a World of Tanks video after all, right? So I'm playing in the Barask on Redshire, and I've been using this vehicle a lot. And I can tell you, this tank is absolutely awesome. It's awesome free to play, and I'm sure that it's ridiculous pay to win. I'm able to win 70% of my games solo in the couple of hundred games that I've played inside this tank. Sometimes I'm going to have worse sessions. Sometimes they're going to have better sessions. They average out to 70% wins. Now, why is that? Because I really feel that this vehicle, in the hands of somebody who knows how to use all of the mechanics in the game and know, has a great knowledge of the enemy's capabilities, can just make some absolute disgusting trades. Look at this reload. Two seconds intra-clip. It's not kind of outrageous. It's not as if this is the best burst damage available at tier 8. Well, it actually might be the best burst damage available at joint best I should say at tier 8 because there's another tank. The difference is is that it's the T-77 Heavy right and the T-77 Heavy has a three round two second intra clip auto loader but that one takes a lot longer to be able to reload than the Borask. That vehicle has got worse damage per minute than the Borask has significantly worse damage per minute the Borask has and because this tank only has two rounds in its magazine that means that it's got a 22 second base time to be able to reload. And that means that when you combine it with only having two rounds, that you can quickly just get out those 720 bursts. Now this vehicle, a lot like the EBR-75, when I looked at the gun, I thought, wow, this is a weird autoloader. Why has it only got two rounds? That's not going to be very useful for being able to have absolutely gigantic mags and being able to assassinate tanks. I was proven wrong with the EBR-75 and that two round burst guns can be very effective because quite often you don't have more than two seconds to sit out in the open. I feel like that's about the time that somebody's sixth sense goes off and pulls back round a corner or that's about the time that people can kind of react, turn their turrets and then aim their reticle and have a good chance of being able to hit you. And so being able to deal large amounts of damage in quick succession is akin to what the TVP does really at tier 10. Now the TVP obviously has 320 alpha damage in a four round magazine giving it 1280 damage potential in four and a half seconds of the first shot which definitely trumps the Borasks. 720 damage in two seconds. But remember this is a tier 8 tank and I just feel that that kind of magazine duration is very effective and so incredibly bursty. This thing can come around the corner and deal 720 damage before the enemy has had a chance to react. Unlike other autoloaders, such as, let's take the T-69 for example. The T-69 has, it's a lot slower than this as well, but it has that 240 alpha damage, not nearly as good as 360. And to be able to deal that with a two second intra-clip reload, sure, you're gonna have a bigger magazine at 960, it's not really that much bigger than 720 though. So the Borask is just outrageously good. I don't think people realized how good the Borask was until they actually managed to play it for a large period of games. Because it's one of those vehicles that in the right situation just seems to be so darn influential on the battlefield. So we've got ourselves into a matchup here, a very nice matchup on one of my favorite maps in the game, Redshire. I, I can't think of a tank type that I don't have fun on this map. I think maybe possibly tank destroyers have a little bit of a worse time than any other. No, actually, that's not true. I think this is a beautiful map. It's definitely one of the classics. And although Wargaming made substantial changes, especially towards to the southeast area of this map, who remembers when the whole of the southeast area around here was a complete kill zone that was almost 
insurpassable. Who would have thought adding uh, undulations and also adding some bushes to be able to allow people to advance along the west corridor of this map and then to attack in the south would have been such a huge tremendous change. Okay, so Borask versus the Super Chaffee versus a T25-2 and a Leo on this flank. And I've got three artillery, so I'm hoping they're going to be able to help me out. So you notice in the Borask that, sure, the vehicle has this really nice bursty gun, but you really have to do everything that you can to tame the horrible dispersion that this vehicle has. So I'm really hoping that my artillery are going to be able to save themselves against the Super Chaffee, and they actually do. Thumbs up there to the artillery on my team. And now we're just going to burst a couple of rounds into the T25-2 as they advance. That is the perfect kind of opportunity for the Borask, a big, softly armoured tank. And look how quickly this thing reloads. Unlike another autoloader where I'd be reloading for a very long time or I'd had to sit out in the open and take damage to be able to fully commit and kill the T25-2, the Borask can very happily fire off those two shots before your opponents are able to react and then be able to reload to give it another go. And even though we're surrounded now, I got a two round magazine. Boom, baby, let's go up here and just about a second after our two second intraclip reload, we managed to shut down the Leo as well. And just like that, double tap, and we put our team back into this game. We were down by four tanks up until that point, but now we are only down by two. But we've still got a large mountain to be able to climb. And here we go. The artillery punishment begins from the M12, although I'm very happy that I only lost 24 hit points there because this vehicle is incredibly lightly armored. 40 millimeters on the front, 20 on the side of the, of the hull, and 20 on the rear of the hull, and 15 and 10 and 10 on the turret. Yeah, if you've got high explosive rounds, definitely launch them in every way that you possibly can at this tank, and then you are going to completely decimate it. All right, so having dealt with the western flank and stopped that advance from a bunch of enemies that I guess thought that maybe I wouldn't, I would be still in the middle of the map, but maybe trying to assist the, uh, the east of this map, I made my way over there, great ambush, and now my artillery is safe so I can focus on the other areas. So I'm asking for help against the Super Hellcat. Our first shell goes wide, our second shell, oh, we had to aim that one very much so because this tank has a 3.5 second aim time and 0.42 accuracy at decent distances. Wargaming really had to do absolutely everything that they could to try and stop this 360 monster alpha damage double tapper from being effective in the game but it doesn't feel like it was quite enough because the Borask actually has the best win ratio of any tier eight medium tank. If I can make this work free to play, then wow, if you can get some premium consumables on this tank or you could get some bounty equipment or bond equipment, I can imagine that this thing is absolutely brutal. Well, I know it is. I've been playing against uh, quite a few Borasks that I suspect were probably fully tricked out in the mission marathon. And it's definitely one of the, the best vehicles there for just being able to go in and have high impact games. All right. So set the scene, Quacky Baby. It's Quacky Baby and three artillery versus five tanks. Uh, make that four tanks and three artillery. So I can, it's not a Kolobanov's medal. Um, it's kind of a Kolobanov's medal if we take away the self-propelled gun support. But here's the thing. I feel that with my view range that I'm hopefully going to make my artillery more effective than the enemy artillery. But that's a challenge when you were outnumbered five to one, but now outnumbered four to one. So. This is where you've just got to know your bush locations, know your view range mechanics, hold your nerve, probably not fire at the scorpion until you feel like it's absolutely necessary to do so and give your artillery time. Oh dear, give your artillery time. Uh, boys and girls, they haven't actually done damage since the Stura Emil about hmm, seven minutes ago. Oh dear, uh, uh, artillery, will you please shoot the scorpion G and you can see that I'm getting frustrated. So I decide to just fire one. And that is discipline. That was not Greedy Baby. Greedy Baby would have sat there and fired the second round. But I really feel like that extra two seconds, I just didn't have it. Who, who's to say that the KV-2 wouldn't one-shot me? Who's to say that the Borast wouldn't double-tap me? Who's to say that there wouldn't be an IKV in position? And there's the Scorpion over the ridge. I've got to try and confirm this one, though. Pull back, see if I can shoot the KV-2, but instead decide to figure out where the Borask is. And you can see that I'm pinging the map to let my artillery know where the Borask will be, or at least for myself, by pinging there. Oh no, I do actually tell the artillery that's where the Borask is. Okay, so now I know that the Borask is in this location here. Then what I want to do is get away from the Borask and try and isolate the bad view range that the KV-2 will have. The KV-2, definitely not the kind of tank that you want to use as a scout. And when it's playing against a French medium tank with pretty darn good camera rating, 
you know you can do some good work. Ah, artillery does 189 damage to the KV-2. All right, well, it's a good start. Hopefully, the artillery are going to be able to give him another one, but at least now they've got him into a position where I've pretty much got about a 70% chance to be able to finish off the KV-2 with a single shot, which is a lot better than having to sit in front of a KV-2, which is not where you want to be with a vehicle that only has that 15 millimeters of turret armor. All right, so this KV-2 really has not thinking about where I have relocated, or maybe the KV-2 was just getting so darn frustrated about being permanently stunned and permanently smashed by the artillery, that actually gives him no chance to be able to fight back. While, of course, I absolutely despise playing against artillery in my hold down vehicles, I've, I got so tilt playing tier 10 Swedish tanks during this mission marathon, where it was just constantly three artillery in every tier 10 game that I played, that I felt like just giving up, not bothering to play tier 10 and instead just try and grind out the experience and at least play vehicles where I feel like it's actually advantageous to have artillery on your team and obviously you have to have artillery on the enemy team as well if you want to have that. I'm very happy to have three self-propelled gun games when I'm playing in a Borask, just like I'm happy to have them when I'm playing in my light tanks and that is what's so refreshing about this vehicle for me that it's kind of a medium tank that plays a bit like a light, but not a pure light, but just has this insane burst potential, which is why this has definitely been my go-to for the mission marathon. Okay, so less than four minutes left in this battle. It's time to get forwards and see if we can try and use these bush locations to outspot our opponents. We don't quite manage it. You can see that each time I advance over the ridge line, I'm aiming at possibly the bush the Boras could be in. I'm trying to hunt him down. If I can take the Boras down, I got a good chance to win this game. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, there is our opposite number shut down and I felt a real burst of opportunity that maybe we might just be able to take this one down. We're changing a one, I'm uh, sorry, a four versus eight situation. Now into a four versus three situation. This is definitely looking like it's in my favor. And with the artillery, why is the artillery so good at shooting artillery but did so bad at dealing with heavy tanks? But drama has just happened. While I'm making my way towards the enemy camp circle, while we can't see on the minimap because it's, uh, well, we can see on the minimap, but we can't see because it's too far away from us, the IKV just managed to shut down two of my self-propelled guns in quick succession. So now it's an M44 versus the IKV inside our cap circle. So I immediately get into a bush. The M12 hasn't spotted me. It looks like he wants to try and run me down as if he wants to spot me for the AMX, but I'm not going to be having that. I pull back behind the bush. I fire through the bush to shut down the M12. And during that moment, my surprise that the M44 on our team actually manages to shut down the IKV2. So a big shout out to you, Suffolk065. I did contact you after this game and say, what an awesome shutdown that was. Definitely took the pressure off me. At that point, I was thinking, do I need to go back to try and deal with the IKV? Do I need to press on to try and deal with the AMX? Do I have time to be able to cap out? Is it risky to stay in here because the IKV could come back within the one minute and 40 seconds that he has to be able to deal with it? Or even the artillery could come and just spot me and interrupt me and then the IKV could cap out and I wouldn't be able to interrupt. So many things going around my mind at this point point of the game and so for the m44 to take off the pressure even though we have killed half of the enemy team here look at these dog tags that we are picking up we've already secured ourselves a radley walters medal but are we going to be able to take down the victory we have 654 hit points left and i can tell you the amx has got more than enough alpha damage to be able to do at least a significant chunk of those if not be able to take out my vehicle as well so here comes the hero. Look at this. We've got Suffolk in his M44 rapidly as he possibly can, making his way towards the cap circle because maybe if I get interrupted and he's in the cap circle within the 50 seconds or the last few seconds, that he's going to be able to help out. This is what a good artillery player will do. An artillery player will think about also getting into position to secure the game. You might wonder, why did I just shoot that wall? Well, my idea was that maybe the AMX would be waiting to try and interrupt me at the very end of the game. And if I shoot the wall down, he might think that I'm here and I still have the extra round in the Borask's magazine to be able to deal with him if he was to advance towards us. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Quacky baby versus the artillery, albeit with artillery as well. And it looks like I made my self-propelled guns more useful than the enemy team, and I was very happy to be able to deal with this one versus five situation 
with three self-propelled guns against three self-propelled guns. So an ace tanker here for our Barask, and this was actually quite an achievement because I've had 1,400 base experience games in this tank during the mission marathon that were just a first class. That is how good this vehicle is. To actually be able to ace this tank, we had to kill half of the enemy team and get 1,550 base experience. There's eight kills picking us up a Radley Walters medal. We get a tank sniper medal for dealing a significant amount of that at long range, a high caliber for the 4,686 damage that we dealt, and an invader medal for securing the game with a cap. And one thing I've really been noticing on my free-to-play account, as I never use premium consumables, I've made probably about 35 million credits over... The, the grinding session of this marathon. And when you're making 178,000 credits per game and your consumable resupply is only about 3,000 credits from this one, I would recommend all of you out there to, even though sometimes they give you those premium consumables, they still have a 10,000 credit price tag because you could sell them. And once again, a massive thank you to you, Suffolk065, and your M44 bottom tier self propelled gun having a very large impact in this game, landing second on damage and also second on experience and when I look that I had to do three times more than anyone else on the enemy team and the fact that it was the Borask on the enemy team as well who dealt who dealt five times more than anyone else on his enemy team this one certainly did feel as if it was kind of a duel between the premium medium tanks love it or hate it. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was Quacky Baby versus the Artillery. Really hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, give it a thumbs up, but if you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And if you're watching this video as it goes live on Sunday, I've got possibly the best stream of the year, I think, live right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. It's going to be a Jagdpanzer E100 tech tree showcase. It's one of my favorite lines to showcase because there's so much variety and so much depth all the way along it. And then after the tech tree showcase today, I am going to be finishing the grind on my free to play account, unlocking the object 274A, and I'll play it for the first time as well. So really looking forward to seeing all of you right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.